Hey there, today I'm going to show you how I build this industrial style desk with tons of shelving storage as well as an optional area to hang some clothes if you want to. So without further ado, let me start by showing you how I designed it. Alright, so here you can see the first iteration of the design. There were three main things that I wanted to incorporate. The first being the desktop, second being the shelves, and third being some areas to hang some clothes. Not a full-on closet, but just a few items here and there. So as you can see, we accomplished all that in this first design. I like the symmetry in this, and the key thing to remember in this design is that the way that these shelves are supported is with a cross member going across here, and the shelves are actually narrow enough to fit in between the pipes. So now let's move on to the second iteration of the design. As you can see, I tried with some asymmetrical shelving, but I didn't really like how this middle shelf lined up with the desktop. So in the third design, I added a fourth shelf. I really like how this is looking. And then I added a bar here to hang some clothes, uh, but it just wasn't perfect. So let's move on to the fourth design. And this is where I made a big breakthrough. And that was taking out this cross member to support the shelves and actually just having a hole in the shelf. And that way the shelf can go wider than the pipe and they'll actually be supported with just some straight connectors as you'll see. And I just really like this design, but let's see what it looks like in the actual room now. And I'm really liking this look, but I made one last change, and that was just to shift the shelves to the left side and the hanging area to the right. So now that we have our design, let's go to Home Depot and buy all of our supplies. I'm a very visual person, so when I got to Home Depot, I screwed the parts together to actually visualize what it's going to look like and to take some more accurate measurements. I'll get into specifics on the exact number and what size pieces you need later in the video. Now that we have all of our materials, we can go ahead and start unpackaging everything. However, they come extremely greasy, so to clean them up, I'm going to be using some mineral spirits. Let's get to it. I like to wear latex gloves during this cleaning process because the grease tends to get everywhere and paper towels work fine, but if the grease is being extra stubborn, you can break out some steel wool as well. One of the hardest parts during the design phase of this desk was making sure that the left leg of the desk, which is 30 inches, matches the right leg of the desk, which is made up of different 12 inch sections of pipe. And I was able to get it just perfect using two 12 inch sections, two straight connectors, and then a four and a half inch section of pipe on the end. And now they're the exact same length, so the desk will be perfectly level. And here's yet another scenario where we had to get two different pipes to the same total length. This one had to be 48 inches, and this one had to be 30 inches, so I had to figure out what length these pipes had to be, and I needed to fit a T-connector in here. I thought that two 8-inch pipes would work, uh, but it was too long, so luckily I bought a 10-inch pipe and a 5-inch pipe, and then connected them with a straight connector, and now they're the perfect length. Now that we have everything clean, we can go ahead and start cutting the holes for our shelves. I went ahead and pre-assembled a small section just so I could take a couple measurements to determine how far apart these are with a 12 inch pipe in between, as well as how far away from the wall the holes need to be. So now that I have all of those measurements, I went ahead and penciled them in with some tape onto this shelf. That way I have the exact point where I can start my Forstner bit. And I'm going to be using a 1 and 3 8 Forstner bit to cut my holes for this 1 inch pipe because the 1 inch pipe actually refers to the inside diameter and the 1 and 3 8 bit leaves just enough clearance to slide the pipe through. Once all the holes were drilled, I ripped down all of the boards to 13 and a half inches, leaving about an inch and a quarter reveal on either side of the hole. I then drilled two pocket holes in each shelf opposite the holes, and these will be used to screw into the wall during the install. After giving everything a good sanding, I applied two coats of oil-based polyurethane to all of the shelves, sanding in between each coat. All right, it is finally time to start assembling. I got a picture here that I drew out just so I can reference it. But yeah, this is pretty much uh, adult Lego, so let's get to it. I'm actually gonna start with this long 48 inch pipe, which will support the desktop. And I'm gonna screw on these T connections on either side because you won't be able to screw these on basically if you already assemble the rest of these long pipe sections. So it's best to start with these first. And this part was actually a ton of fun because I've been continually visualizing this in my head and now I can finally start to see it come to fruition in real life. And you can pretty much assemble the whole thing by hand. You can use a pipe wrench here and there if you need to and use another pipe as leverage to kind of twist things together. And here I'm putting on the shelf for the very first time. I was praying that it would work properly and luckily it did. As you can see, it slides right over the pipe and then it's supported by those straight connectors because the hole that we cut into those shelves is just the perfect diameter where it's not too narrow but not too wide either. 
I've realized now that I'm going to have to stand this up now to finish the assembly because adding in these shelves makes it a little bit more complex. Now you do have to be kind of strategic with the order of operations here. As I mentioned, you kind of want to start with that desk support and branch off from there. I decided to build pretty much the whole right side nearly and then start on the shelves on the left. Then I connected the two into one big piece and here you can see me swinging that big thing around because I realized that the two vertical pipes that support the shelf were too close together so I had to loosen it to widen the pipes basically and swing that whole thing around. Luckily I got the shelf to eventually fit. And here you can see me just making some adjustments on the left and you want to make sure that you add those shelves in as you go because they're basically locked in place by the straight connectors if you do the whole thing without adding shelves you're gonna have to take the whole thing back apart all right so now that we have everything assembled and put together we can go ahead and start screwing it onto the wall to secure it however i'm going to make a change before doing that the gap here right now is 12 inches and i decided to do that so that it mirrored the other side and it was symmetrical and this here is for hanging clothes however i do think now that it's built it is a little bit too small um, uh, this isn't meant to be for a full closet, mainly for guests and whatnot. I'm not going to have too many hanging clothes. However, I do think it still is a little bit small. So I'm going to go ahead and take out this pipe here, which is 12 inches, and replace it with a 24 inch pipe. So this whole section here will just move over another 12 inches and it will double in size. Now I will have to take out this shelf and rebuild it. However, I do think it's going to be worth it in the end. So let's go ahead and get to it. And these are those sorts of decisions that you don't really want to make in the moment, but each and every day that you look at the project after the fact, you're going to regret that you didn't make that decision. So that's why I went ahead and decided to expand this section of the closet. After cutting out the holes for the new shelf, I ripped down a 1x10 to create a shelf that spans across the entire top of the desk. And then I put polyurethane on that, the new shelf, and also the desktop, which is just a 2x4 panel that you can buy at Home Depot. I then found these pipe clamps that will be used to secure the desk and that top shelf and just sprayed them black so they kind of disappear. You don't really see them. I could then slide on the new shelf and I'm really happy I made the decision to expand it. Then I started to screw in the shelves on the left using those pocket screws that we drilled earlier and I used my laser level as you can see on the left to make sure that they're perfectly aligned and plumb. I then screwed in the right side of the desk and I found it easiest to screw in the shelf first and then the flanges since the flanges have a bit of leeway as you can screw them in or loosen them to get them flush with the wall. Once that was complete I could screw in the desktop again using pocket screws and then as I mentioned we're going to use those pipe clamps to secure it to the actual pipe. I only used two pipe clamps for this desk because gravity is pretty much holding it down and those pocket screws in the back. But then for this top shelf, I decided to add six of them, two on the far outside posts and one on each of the middle posts. And with that, the last thing to do is to add some decor. So without further ado, here is the final result. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below on your thoughts of the build and if you change anything, perhaps you get rid of this closet over here and just add more shelving. It's a pretty modular design so you can definitely adapt it to your specific situation. And for those of you wondering the number and sizes of all the pipe that you need to build this specific project, I'll throw up a quick material list on screen. You can go ahead and pause it to write those down. As I was building it, I was becoming more and more confident that it was going to turn out to be a really cool project. But what really took it up a notch was all of this decor, and that's thanks to my girlfriend Bianca for helping me pick all of it out and also stage it. The decor looks really cool, but it's also very functional. As you can see, we have a few boxes scattered throughout so you can put some knickknacks and stuff that you don't want necessarily being seen. And if you are using it as a closet, you could put like socks or shorts or something in those boxes as well. I also had to fit a Lego in here and luckily it fits the aesthetic quite well. And then up top here, we have a few family photos, both of which were taken here at the lake house. And then the third photo over here is actually a picture of the old bedroom before it was renovated. Which leads me to my next point. If you've been following the channel for a little while, you'll know that I've been renovating this downstairs bedroom. And it's taken me a little bit while to get to that finish line, but we're finally here. This was actually the last project in the bedroom. I thought I'd show you guys this one first, but either next week or the week after, I'll be posting the bedroom renovation. I think it's gonna be all in one part, but it may be two, but two would be the maximum. And I'm really excited to show it to you guys. And if you do wanna see that, please subscribe and also smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next time.